Hey everyone, I wanted to do a, another screencast for my Everyday App series here and um, make it a little bit more interesting than my last one, which, I mean, arguably wasn't boring per se. Uh, learning how to grab an IP address out of the request can definitely be useful and hopefully it kind of gave you some push towards exploring that a little bit more. Uh, however, this one is going to be a stopwatch and... Um, this could definitely be useful for a couple of different things. Like, obviously, it adds some uh, like more whiz bang to your websites. Uh, you can um, obviously time things. You could set maybe like a time signature for a promo code that's going to expire or something like that. Um, it's really cool. Probably more useful on like an everyday basis in your development purposes. Uh, you can start it and then I have it set so every second it changes the background color just to be a little bit more fun. You can stop it and you can reset it. So that's really cool. Let's take a look at what we're doing. Um, and dive a little bit further into it. So um, we'll start with the HTML. It's pretty basic stuff. Uh, I just give the body, background, and ID. Um, just because we're going to be changing that color, I wanted to just ensure that uh, we are staying um, on this specific body. Not that I think that Rails would allow me to manipulate the whole body of the app, but I don't think that either way. Playing it safe, I have an ID for it. Uh, we also have a container holding our um, div, which is our main container for the stopwatch. Uh, this clock tag, uh, which is just a number of zeros hard-coded in. So when you get to the page, we have some zeros and then some buttons here for start, stop, and reset. With a little bit of uh, bootstrap DSL to give us different colors. And then obviously a separate class for start, stop, and reset. So cool. That's our HTML, and we'll go over to the JavaScript. And so, uh, like always, uh, or for most of these apps anyway, we've been using jQuery, so we're uh, saying that once the document's ready loading, or once the DOM is ready loading, we're going to start running this, uh, this script here. Uh, what we're doing is declaring a number of uh, variables. So we're grabbing the clock off of the, um, the tag here, and we're also grabbing start, stop, and reset buttons. Um, but from their classes, and then we are setting four different variables here. Uh, milliseconds are zero, seconds are zero, minutes are zero, and then we have T, which is actually not being defined. So that's something known as hoisting. We won't be defining what T actually is until later in the application. Um, so anything that I'm saying actually too, that's a good point, is if you want to learn more about hoisting, um, absolutely, Google it. Google everything. Um, read more about hoisting and what it is and why it's important. Uh, what else here? So I guess a good place to start, um, we can ignore the first two functions. These are from a previous application, uh, the random color hex and uh, the switching to the background. Uh, both came out of our background JS app, everyday app. So if you want to see or read more about those, listen more about those, just watch that screencast. Um, Let's start on line 17 with the add function. And essentially what we're doing in the add function is when it gets called, we are incrementing our milliseconds by one. And we're then also checking that if the milliseconds are greater than 100, we reset milliseconds back to zero. We increment our seconds by one and um, we switch the background color. Now you might be thinking like, hey man, like there's actually a thousand milliseconds in a second, like what's the deal with that? Uh, what we're doing is when we call add, we're actually only calling add every 10 milliseconds. So 10 times 100 equals a thousand, that gives us a thousand milliseconds equaling one second. So, um, yeah, kind of moving forward from there, we can see on line 23, we then check to see if the seconds are greater than 60. If that's the case, we're going to reset our seconds back to zero and then increment our minute. So that's like the basic logic of the application. Um, something that might be new or maybe that you haven't played with is this set timeout. And that's where we're actually declaring T. So that's what hoisting is, is up here we don't have anything declared for t. It's not a string, it's not an integer. Um, what we're declaring t as here in line 36 through 38 is the result of the set timeout um, passing it the add function every 10 milliseconds. So definitely encourage you to read about hoisting and like how you can use that differently throughout your application. Here's a very, very simple um, 
application of that. Um, so yeah, once we are calling at every 10 milliseconds, we go through this logic of the application here, we get to line 28 and we make a string um, or make time string. And what we're doing here, this might look like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but essentially those are three different ternary operators. And if you haven't used ternary operators, I'm gonna give you a really quick example of what they do here in IRB. Uh, so basically what happens is in this first part, it checks whether a statement is true or false. So let's say like um, is 10 greater than nine and that's true. So we're asking a question, great, put a question mark there. The first piece here is going to be the return if the um, check of this is true. So let's say like, okay, 10 is greater than nine. We wanna return yay. And then we put a colon and we also want to give a default or um, a return value for if it's false. So we'll say like sad faces. Um, cool. So if we hit enter, we should get a return of yay because 10 is in fact greater than nine. Awesome. So operating under that same, you know, uh, premise, we can say that if 10 is greater than 11, which is false, we're asking that question, we should no longer get this first true value of yay, we should now get this second false return of sad faces. And sure enough, we do. So essentially, um, what we're doing is constructing the string here with this make string function by calling a number of ternary operators and having their values return into this concatenation of a string. Um, and if you want to use any of this code, as always, like feel free to pull it off of GitHub. I'm gonna give a little space here for readability. Um, great, so lines 33 and 34, what we're doing is we're calling um, the clock out of our, we're taking the clock, the jQuery object clock, I should say, and we are calling HTML on it, which is uh, DSL4 jQuery, to insert into that space um, the make string function here, which is that string of ternary operators constructing it. And then lastly, we are calling clock start, which is our function here on line 37, which then calls us to set the timeout for calling the function of add one more time, whoops, and doing that on a 10 millisecond basis. So every time we add, call add from this, we need to make sure that we call it again in 10 milliseconds. Um, so line 41 through 46, we have a function called reset clock, and that's happening when we actually click the reset button. Um, and all that's doing is injecting back into the DOM those uh, zeros in a string that we started with, and then resetting our variables uh, for milliseconds, seconds, and minutes back to zero so that when we restart the clock, we can start from zero again. Makes sense, right? And then lastly, we have our stop um, button click down here on line 53, which calls our function on line 48, stop clock, which essentially just clears our timeout um, of our variable t. So again, we talked about Googling things. Um, so I would definitely recommend further reading on the set timeout um, function for jQuery and definitely look further into the clear timeout function for jQuery, JavaScript, either one. Um, they're not synonymous. Obviously, jQuery is a library for JavaScript. Uh, I would definitely encourage you that if you haven't written JavaScript in, in the past, like start there and then move to jQuery, but jQuery is obviously um, fun and easy to use. So read up on those. Uh, they're very useful. Um, there's a ton of great information out there on them. But anyway, uh, one thing I did wanna point out is that although this code is fun and cool and it works, um, so we have this stopwatch that's changing our background color. Uh, one edge case that I didn't account for is we're not disabling the start button. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can set more than one timeout to um, operate on here. So if I click start again, I'm actually now doubling my stopwatch's time. And if I do it again, I've now tripled my stopwatch's time. And if I keep clicking, I actually am setting all of these timeouts to the point where I'm now getting a strobe effect and I take a bunch of LSD and I go to the club, um, joking. And we have all of these, these set timeouts here. Now, what I really should have done from the beginning was to cancel that button so that we couldn't do that. 
But I think that's a really kind of cool thing that I noticed that I'm actually not going to change because it's really representative of like what programming is. Uh, you don't always think of these edge cases that happen as you're going through the process. So it's kind of fun to see these things arise and see the side effects of them because you never know what your users are actually going to do when they interact with it. So you actually have to hit stop for each one of those to get it to actually stop and then you can reset. Um, but yeah. That's the stopwatch. Um, as always, guys, uh, feel free to you know pull any of this code off of my GitHub. Leave me questions, comments, concerns uh, below. Um, and yeah, keep coding. I hope you all have a great week and an awesome weekend. And see you again soon.